Alright, we are putting some the boot. some fresh tunes in the Space Cowboy. Yeah, shape. What do you guys call it? Space Cowboy. No, what do you guys call that stuff when you were on the camera? Tunes. New tunes. Yeah, the Shay Shep tune. Yeah, okay. Let me show you what we got here. Taking out the old tape deck slash radio. And we're putting in the new all Pioneer components for the uh, speakers and head unit. Pioneer MVH-S322BT. All that is is a uh, head unit slash Bluetooth, no CD. Here it is. Super tiny and lightweight. Bless you. And then for the front, we've got Pioneer TSG460s which are four by sixes. These go in the front dash. And also this. And in the back we have TSG650s, which are six and a half slash six and three quarter. That has to go right there. Those go up here. I'm probably not going to show the installation of the speakers. But that's the components you'll need. Alright, here we are in Space Cowboy. I'm going to go over this radio installation with you. Bear with me, I got a bit of a head cold. Okay, so we're installing this small Pioneer head unit in the Oldsmobile Silhouette Space Cowboy. I went ahead and did all this. Uh, I'm not going to do it on camera, but I am going to run it through step by step how to get this in here. All right. All right. Now, I did this about midnight last night with a flashlight out here in the country, out under the stars. So, if you do this in the daylight, it'd probably be a lot easier. You're going to need a 930 seconds socket and you're going to need a with an with a medium uh, extension and you're also going to need a Phillips head screwdriver that's fairly long to get into some uh, screws there back here okay all right the first two screws you got to remove are going to be 930 seconds. You got to have two 930 seconds. And this is under the driver's side. You got a 930 seconds right here, and you got a 930 seconds over here next to your e brake. Remove both of those. This black piece of trim just comes down a little bit. This whole plastic cover, this whole plastic cover has four clips up top. One, two, roughly. One, two, three, four. This will swing out a little bit, and then you'll have to pry this whole thing off gently. And this whole thing comes off, okay? That's the first step. You'll see a big metal plate right here. Once you get this piece of plastic off, you'll see two Phillips head screws that connect this piece inside. You'll remove those two screws, open your glove box, and this is the same. This is what it looks like on the other side once you remove that other plastic. Try to zoom in on this. They don't want to. It's too dark in there. 
remove those two Phillips head screws. And then on either side at the bottom of this console, you got a screw there. You got a screw there. All right, so those are the only screws you got to undo. And this console will slide out. This whole console will come out towards you. It'll be tight fit, and you're gonna have all these wires hooked up. I didn't disconnect any of those wires. I was able to pull this out good enough to where I could get access to the original stereo. All right, once you get access to the original stereo, down below, on the bottom of this stereo, if I don't drop it, You've got two nuts. Now I'm gonna say these are 10 millimeter. I use the 10 millimeter wrench, open end wrench. You don't have to take these nuts all the way off. Just loosen them enough and they're slotted. And then up top, you got two more nuts. You don't take those nuts off. Leave those nuts off until you get the radio out. Up top, you're gonna to have two 9 32nd bolts that hold a plastic piece of trim in. They'll be roughly here and here. Two 932nd bolts, screws. You pull those out and this radio will come out. And you get this radio out with the kit I have. Now you take these nuts off and you reuse that plastic piece of trim on your new installation kit. That's what holds the installation kit in. On mine, it just only held up top. There was nothing holding it in in the bottom. It looks fairly secure though. After you get done with that, putting your new kit in, you can reverse the steps. This here is kind of a pain to get back in there. Just take your time, be careful. Redo your four Phillips heads, and then go back through, put this back on, and re uh, do your 930 seconds. Gotta go. Here comes the supervisor. All right, so we got that installed. Um, I didn't quite go through all the uh, walkthrough with you. Just showed you where the screws and bolts and what you had to have to take it out. Um, I did the rear speakers, two rear speakers, and then I did the two front speakers. Uh, the two front speakers were kind of a pain in the butt on this 95. Um, on the 96s and ups, uh, I think the covers just pop out of the dash. On the uh, older ones though, they're not made to pop out. Those do not just pop out. You pop them out, you're gonna break them. Guess what? I broke mine. So I'm gonna have to glue those back down But uh, radio does what I want it to. The MVH-S322BT, no CD player, just Bluetooth, so it hooks to your phone, has radio. Um, I have YouTube Red, that's what I use, YouTube Red. I pay a monthly subscription for the YouTube Red. 
so that lets me play anything over the radio uh, this does have the microphone which I haven't hooked up yet so you can talk on the telephone through the radio I gotta run that cord it's gonna be pretty simple I'm just gonna run it from here straight through down and into the back but uh, overall not a bad install process uh, like I said I enjoy the radio sounds better than factory to me um, here down the road I got a gonna put a subwoofer in here like I said I already started on the box but uh, that's the process thanks for watching and I'll try to put pictures of all the install of the install dash kit the wire harness I'll try to put that in the uh, end of the video so if you have a hard time it took me it, it was kind of the uh, kit and the wiring harness didn't it just said GM models so it does fit the silhouette and it would probably you know it should fit the lumina and the transport too